obtain a copyright, you actually obtain a bundle of rights. There are several rights associated with, uh, uh, with a copyright. And there are a bundle of exclusive rights, meaning no one else has the right to do these things except the owner of the work. One of those rights is the right to reproduce. When you own a copyright to your composition, to your arrangement, to your sound recording, or to your video, no one can reproduce that work without your permission. So what that means, it goes for the compositions and arrangements and videotapes and sound recordings of other authors. You are not allowed to reproduce their works without their permission. There's also the right to distribute. And distribute means not only just to sell, you're not even allowed to give away someone else's work without their permission. But you have that right as well when it comes to your works. No one can sell, lease, rent, or give away your work without your permission. There's also the right to make derivatives. When you own a copyright in a work, no one can edit, alter, change, adapt, or arrange your work without your permission. Which means when you make an arrangement of someone else's work, you must get that person's permission in order to do so. Because what you're doing is you're making a derivative of their work, and they have the exclusive right to make a derivative, meaning no one can make a derivative without their permission. There's also the right to publicly display. Now, we don't use that right a lot when it comes to music, because usually music isn't put on display. But occasionally, it is. If a musical work is put on a poster, or if it's transcribed on a wall, no one has the right to, to publicly display, meaning display your work in public without your permission. And finally, there's the, work to publicly perf the right to publicly perform. No one can perform your work in public without your permission. And conversely, you cannot perform the work of another without their permission. Now, there's a slight caveat to that when I say you cannot perform the work of another. Because the right to public performance right, means whoever is making the performance available to the public cannot do so without permission. For example, um, I had uh, someone in the legal office at the University of Memphis call me and say that they had an act that wanted to come on campus and they wanted to play some Beatles songs. But they did not have permission, they had no information, no contracts, no paperwork that said that they had permission from the Beatles in order to perform those songs on campus. And I explained to them, they don't have to have permission from the Beatles to perform the music on campus. Because they, the individual act, technically, they are not the ones who are performing the work. I'll say that again. The act coming on campus, technically under the law, they're not the ones performing the work. Do you know who's actually performing the work? Meaning, making the work available for public performance? It's the university. It's the university. And the exclusive right you have is to public performance. So the university is the one making the performance available to the public. When the act comes on campus, if there's nobody there to hear it, it's not a public performance. And the only way people can be there to hear it is if the university allows people in. So the university is the one. The FedEx Forum is the one. The nightclubs, the Starbucks, Right? They're the ones making the performance available to the public, so they are the ones who have to get permission to publicly perform. And they don't even have to go to the Beatles directly, because if they did, they'd have to go to each and every one of you to get your permission to publicly perform your work. So instead of doing that, what they do is they go to your PRO, your Performance Rights Organization. Which is another thing that, because we don't teach music business in schools of music, many of our students don't know that in order to collect royalties on the public performance of their work, they need to be signed up with a performance rights organization. Because only performance rights organizations collect royalties per public performance. 
There are three public performance organizations in the United States. Every country has their own, but the United States has three. ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. So as a songwriter or as a composer, you would be signed up with ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC, and they would collect public performances on your behalf, and they would issue licenses to people like the University of Memphis or the FedEx Forum or the nightclub down the street, and they would issue what are known as blanket licenses, which say, you, University of Memphis, have permission to perform every song in the ASCAP catalog. So no matter who signed up with ASCAP, you have permission to perform every song in the ASCAP catalog, which means anybody can come on campus and perform any song, and we're covered. Except, what if they're a BMI writer? That means we have to get a license with BMI as well. And what if they're a CSAC writer? We have to get a license from CSAC as well. So public performance can be very, very expensive except it's based on capacity. So the nightclub down the street wouldn't pay as much as the University of Memphis would, because why? We have more people coming onto campus, we perform more music on a regular basis, et cetera, et cetera. Our revenues are higher, so the licenses are based on that. But public performance is a great, sense of, uh, uh, is a great way for songwriters and composers to make money if they're aware of.